Hello everyone, today in this module we are going to talk about few examples of Indian ecosystem. India is the seventh largest country of the world in terms of its area. India is an exceptional subcontinent due to its vast variability in its geographical area, topography and climate. Due to these differences, it carries a lot of diversity in its ecosystem. Each ecosystem will have a unique set of species of its own. Including all the ecosystems, India carries 8% of the total biodiversity of the earth. And therefore, it is also among the 12 mega diversity zones of the world. In this module, we are going to study about the distribution and ecology of all the ecosystems of India. The learning objectives of this module are vegetation types of India, forest and grassland types, analysis of aquatic ecosystems, assessment of zonation in aquatic ecosystems. The total forest cover in India is 78.92 million hectare, which is 24.01 percent of the total geographical area of the country. It is less than the recommended forest cover, at least one third of the total geographical area of the country. The climax vegetation is represented by either forest or desert vegetation, primarily on the basis of temperature. Indian vegetation is characterized in four major zones. For example, alpine means annual temperature is below 7 degrees centigrade. Second is the temperate where mean annual temperature lies between 7 to 17 degrees centigrade. The third is subtropical where the mean annual temperature ranges from 17 to 24 degrees centigrade and the fourth one is the tropical where the annual temperature is over 24 degrees centigrade. Champagne and Seed characterize the Indian forest into five major categories. First is the tropical, then montane subtropical, montane temperate, subalpine and alpine. Due to difference in annual temperature, rainfall and dry periods among the forests, the forest types are further divided into subtypes or groups. Thus, India has a total of 16 forest vegetation types which are shown in the slide. The forest types of India showing mean annual minimum and maximum temperature, rainfall, dry periods, distribution and their major species are shown in the slide. A brief description on the 16 forest types in India as described by Champagne and Sait in 1968 are given below. First one is as follows that is the tropical wet evergreen forest. These forests are similar to tropical rainforest dominated by evergreen trees with close canopy. Evergreen trees are the climax vegetation. Number of species per hectare has been estimated in a range of 40 to 100. The next is the tropical semi evergreen forest. These forests experience rainfall in between 2000 to 2500 millimeter. Such forests are occurring in Assam, Lusai, Kalimpong and Orissa hills. In these forests, top stories are dominated by the deciduous species while middle and lower stories are dominated by the evergreen species. Tropical moist deciduous forest. These forests are also dominated by the deciduous species. Understory is predominated by the evergreen species. The height of trees varies from 30 to 40 meter. Rainfall occurs around 1200 to 2500 millimeter. Next is the littoral and swamp forest. Such forests are found in coastal regions of West Bengal, Orissa, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu and Gujarat. The species are mainly evergreen composed of mangrove and freshwater swamp forest. Tropical dry deciduous forest. The temperate and rainfall are major determinant factors for the distribution of these forests. The rainfall varies in the range of 800 to 1200 millimeter. Next is the tropical thorn forest. These forests are also known as xeric forest due to occurrence of very less rainfall 
which lies in the range of 200 to 800 millimeter. The dry region is very long, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan, Gujarat and Punjab are common areas for the occurrence of these forests. Tropical dry evergreen forests. Occurrence of rainfall in these forests lies between 870 and 1200 millimeter. They are found on the eastern coast of Chennai. Trees are mainly hard leaved evergreen type having nearly 20 meter height. Next is the subtropical broad leaved hill forest. The vegetation is composed of mainly broad leaved and evergreen with high forest trees. Such forests are usually seen on western and central Himalayas and on the hills of South India. Himalayan dry temperate forests. Basically, they are the open forests with trees having 50 meter heights. These forests are found along inner valleys of Himalayas, experiencing less than 1000 mm of rainfall. The predominant trees are coniferous species. Subalpine forests. These forests occur in the regions of Jammu and Kashmir, Punjab, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, West Bengal and North East. At altitude of 2,900 to 3,500 meter, temperature and precipitation in these forests are very poor. Subtropical pine forest. These forests mainly occur on hills and largely pine forests extend in the western and central Himalayas between 1,000 to 2,000 meter. Next is the subtropical dry evergreen forest. They are low xerophytic scrub and open forests. They are dominated by acacia, olea, dodinia and many hardwood species. Mountain wet temperate forests. They are broad leaved and closed evergreen forests without conifers. The development of buttress does not occur. Lianas and epiphytes are fewer with thinner stems of lianas. Lichens and mosses are found in abundance. Himalayan moist temperate forest. They are broad leaved evergreen forests with oak and conifers. In general, these forests occur all along Himalaya at 1500 to 3300 meter altitude in the regions of Jammu Kashmir, Punjab, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, West Bengal, Assam, and Eastern Himalayas. The height of trees is up to 50 meter moist alpine scrub. They occur throughout the Himalayas above timberline to 5500 meter altitude, particularly in the regions of Kashmir, Uttarakhand, Sikkim, Manipur, Western and Eastern Himalayas. Dry alpine forest. The forests are alpine xerophytic, occur in very low rainfall that is around 370 millimeter areas at up to 5,500 meter altitude in the regions of Himachal Pradesh, Kashmir and Uttarakhand. All the above forest types are experiencing unpredictable anthropogenic activities. Among them, the dry deciduous forests are the most threatened, hence the situation is more alarming for such grasslands. Because of high anthropogenic pressure in the past several decades, the dry deciduous forest cover is being converted into dry deciduous scrub, dry savanna and dry grasslands which are progressively species poor. Now we will be talking about the grasslands. The natural grasslands are formed in areas having erratic and low annual precipitation just suitable for the growth of grasses. Such low precipitation and occurrence of fire do not support the tree growth. The annual precipitation between 250 to 300 mm in temperate zone and up to 1500 mm in tropical zone support the luxuriant growth of grasslands. In India, grasslands occupy about 18 percent of the total land area and are very heterogeneous in their distribution due to variability in climatic conditions, soil and disturbance regimes. The grasses have greater tolerance to extreme of temperature that is greater aridity, greater cold and wetter places than the trees. 
Further, the ecotypic differentiation and phenotypic plasticity facilitates many grasses to survive under extreme environments. The ecological status of Indian grasslands is debatable due to the climax vegetation viewpoint which would be either forest or desert vegetation. Grasslands are existing because of the biotic interference, burning, shifting, cultivation and grazing of forest for the last several thousand years. Long term agricultural practices converted majority of grasslands into agroclimax. In India, it is very painful to find virgin grassland. The Indian tropical grasslands are frequently scattered and are known as savanna. In this slide, we can see the distribution of major grasslands in India. White in 1957 classified Indian grasslands into eight types. These grasslands briefly describe and are indicated in this slide. The first one goes like Shaima dicanthium type of grasslands. The second is dicanthium centrus grasslands. Third is Phragmites sacrum dominates in marshy locations. The fourth is Bothiochloa grasslands. Fifth is Symbopogon grasslands. Sixth is Arundinella grasslands. Seventh is Deusia arundilla type of grassland. The eighth is Descamchia denusia type of grassland. Aquatic ecosystems. It is amazing that only 3% of the total water on earth is represented as fresh water and remaining 97th is as salt water. Further, it is again interesting that river and lakes cumulatively contain only 1% of the total fresh water and rest 99% is present in form of frozen ice glaciers and underground. Aquatic ecosystems are the most valued life sustaining water resources. Throughout the world, there are most productive and potential source of carbon sequestration. The strength of wetlands distributed in different states and union territories of India are shown in the figure. This indicated that the Gujarat has highest wetland coverage while the least coverage is represented by Chandigarh. The freshwater ecosystems have been divided into two major categories that is the first one is the standing water or lentic ecosystems which uh, comprises of lakes and ponds. The second one is the flowing water or lotic ecosystems which comprises of river streams and springs. Irrespective of fresh and marine water on the land surface is designated as wetlands. The lentic ecosystem which comprises of lakes and ponds. The term lentic that is to make calm is used for stagnant waters. Lakes and ponds are excellent examples of lentic ecosystem. Basically, ponds and lakes have three distinct zones that is the littoral, lemnitic and profundal zones. The littoral zone is a shallow area adjacent to edge or shoreline of pond or lake. In littoral zone, light reaches up to the bottom of the pond and supports the rooted plants. Lemnitic zone is the open water after the littoral zone. In this zone, light intensity supports only phytoplanktons. Just below the lemnitic zone, the deepest zone found in larger lakes is the profundal zone. The smaller lakes and ponds experiences the absence of profundal zone, as it is the deepest zone and light does not reach up to this zone. Therefore, only heterotrophs survive in this zone. Here, the available organic materials are decomposed by the anaerobic bacteria. As a result, the profundal zone is rich in minerals. The lotic ecosystem. The lotic ecosystem comprises of rivers and stream. Rivers and streams are excellent examples of lotic freshwater ecosystems, that is, the running freshwater ecosystems. India is endowed with a total of 72 river basins covering nearly 45,000 km long river line, line systems. Rivers are the collection of streams deeper, longer and larger than the streams. The nature of lotic water ecosystem significantly differs between its source that is the origin and its mouth 
where it empties into another water body. Many of the perennial rivers originate in springs and others from melting glaciers. The rivers have cool waters and fast currents as reaches away from its origin. Lotic ecosystems exchange nutrients and energy at larger areas compared to lentic ecosystems. These attributes are prevalent in rivers than the streams. Presence of currents and absence of thermal stratification in lotic ecosystem discriminate them from lentic ecosystem. The organism of lotic water ecosystems vary largely from one lotic ecosystem to another due to differences in the strength of the currents. Headwater streams are typically shallow, cool, rapidly flowing and oxygen rich compared to downstreams because downstreams are wider, deeper, cloudy, not as cool, slower flowing and less oxygenated. These conditions the species differentiate in composition between rivers and streams as well as between head streams and downstreams. For example, in low current and deeper water areas, sand and still deposition takes place on the bottom of lotic ecosystem. In such zone, burrowing animals, rooter plants and swimming organisms flourish and survive. However, plankton occur only in those zones where water is deep and the current is gentle. The marine ecosystem. Globally, oceans cover approximately 70 percent of earth's surface and characterized by saline and alkaline water. Similar to lakes, oceans also show vertical and horizontal stratification. Holistically, ocean is divided into two major regions that is pelagic region that is the whole water body and benthic region that is the bottom of the oceans. Graphically, ocean zones are presented in the slide and for better understanding the vertical and horizontal strata of the ocean can also be understood. Vertically, the pelagic region is divided into three strata that is the fortec root zone from the surface of ocean to nearly 200 meter deep within the ocean experiencing distinct gradients of light, temperature and salinity. The next is the mesopelagic zone from 200 meter to 1000 meter deep. In this layer, light penetration is very little and less temperature gradient, hence less seasonal variation can be found. It has very less oxygen concentration but maximum nitrate and phosphate concentrations. Just below the photic zone, the heterotrophic organisms depend for their food on settling down of organic debris from the upper layer. These heterotrophic organisms are predators, scavenger or filter feeder. The third is the Bathai pelagic zone that is just beneath the mesopelagic layer have varied depth due to global variation in location. This layer regions from 100 to 700 meter and 2000 to 4000 meter. This region is characterized by high darkness except for the bioluminance fissures, low temperature and high pressure. Horizontally, the pelagic region is characterized into the first is Neritic province that is the shallow water zone experiencing water lying over the continental shelf. The next is the ocean province, deep ocean zone, open ocean harbor less organisms than the necritic zone due to light and nutrients scarcity. Only surface zone receives adequate sunlight which supports the growth of algae. Microscopic algae are the basic food source of zooplanktons which are further eaten by other organisms. And the third is a bisal pelagic or benthipelagic province which lies over the major plains of the ocean down to about 6000 meter. The ocean bottom is known as benthic region. It is divided into four distinct zones having differences in the bottom life. First is the sublittoral or self zone just lying below the necritic pelagic zone and above the continental shelf. The margin of the ocean or the intertidal zone is recognized as littoral. Next is the bathyal zone 
which covers the continental shelves and down to 400 meter. Third is the abyssal zone which occupies the broad ocean plains below the 6000 meter. The abyssal plain of the oceans has undulating topography and exhibits high species diversity. The fourth is a hardal zone or the benthic zone of oceanic trenches between 6000 to 10000 meter. It is the deepest place on earth's plunge as deep as 11000 meters below the surface of the sea. The water depth, distance from the shore and drainage of river and glacier into the ocean determine structure and function of the ocean ecosystem. Mangrove is word used for a group of halophytic plant species or plant communities dominated by salt tolerant plant species. Such ecosystems occur in intertidal zones of sheltered shores, estuaries, creeks, lagoons, marshes and mud flats along the coastline. Mangroves are formed due to absence of wave actions along the coast. In India, mangroves are found along the islands, major deltas, estuaries and blackwaters of the east coast. Mangroves occupy 4628 square kilometer area of earth or 0.14% of the total geographical area of the country. Sundarbans and Mahanadi, Krishna and Godavari mangroves of Andhra Pradesh and Muthupet and Pichavaram mangroves of Tamil Nadu, Gulf of Kutch and Kambat mangroves of Gujarat and Andaman and Nicobar Island mangroves are in India. The Sundarbans in West Bengal covers nearly half of the total area under mangroves. The Indian mangroves are homes of many endangered species of crocodiles, snakes, tigers and birds. Biotic pressure and natural calamities are threatening the species as well as ecosystems of mangroves. Hence, conservation and management of mangroves is needed for humans as well as ecological well-being. Sundarbans The Sundarban is one of the longest mangrove forests of the world. It is situated in the delta of Ganges, Brahmaputra and Meghna rivers covering an area of nearly 16,000 km square. Interestingly, 60% of this is in Bangladesh and only 40% is in India. It experiences a warm, humid climate and annual rainfall between 1600 to 1800 millimeter. The rainfall is received from June to October during the southwest monsoon. The fresh water of the Sundarban is supplied by the Gangas and Brahmaputra throughout the year. That is why the salinity of the Sundarban is lower than the sea water. The Sundarban's delta is rich in flora and fauna. It is the home of large number of invertebrates, insects, fishes, molas, crustaceans, monkeys and reptiles and is the only habitat for the endangered Royal Bengal tiger. Sea grasses. Plants completely submerged in salty water of the ocean are known as sea grasses. These plants only occur in shallow water up to a depth of 10 meter or up to a certain water depth receiving enough light for their efficient photosynthesis. Luxuriant growth of sea grasses occur in waters of subtropical and tropical regions having calm temperature. Sea grass communities are found along the eastern and western coast of India as well as Andamar and Nicobar Islands. Sea grasses form a thick meadow on sandy and coral debris at the water bottoms and occasionally in the crevices of underwater. The patchy areas of sea waters provide more resources to fishes, crabs and starfishes than the continuous area. Sea urchins severely change the above ground biomass of seagrass, thus the structure of individual seagrass plants and the seagrass density declines. Consequently, the sea urchins face the problem of their vulnerability to predation. Coral Reef Ecosystem Coral reefs are found in subtropical and tropical sea waters of shallow depth, approximately 25 meter de deep, as a biological origin rather than the geographical origin. Carbonate secreting organisms 
basically coral which is a small saline trait are main sources of coral reef while coralline red algae formifera and molas also contribute in the formation of coral reef this calcium carbonate secreted from the organism hardens around coral and joins it to the reef the stable water provided by shallow continental shelves and submerged volcanoes act as a strong foundation upon which the coral reefs are found coral reefs are complex ecosystem having direct relationship between coral organisms and algae the animal creates a colonial structure fixed in a skeleton of calcium carbonate or mass of it symbiotic algae zooxanthellae lie within the coral cells interestingly only the external portion of the reefs are alive and envelop it as skin subsequent to the death of organism and their hard portions are added to the reef structure coral reefs are diversity rich ecosystems than any other ecosystem in the sea estimates suggested that around 3000 species are found from a single reef of southeast asia and more than 1000 species from a single caribbean reef the coral reefs are usually characterized into barrier reef fringing reef and atolls india harbors all type of reef and the total coverage area of total reef has been estimated about 2374.9 square kilometer the india reefs are distributed along the east and west coast fringing reefs are in gulf of manar and palk bay andamar and nicobar islands have fringing as well as barrier reefs while atoll reefs are found in lakshadweep globally around 58% of coral reefs have been degraded because of coastal development over exploitation in addition to marine and land based pollution therefore it is a serious need to protect such most threatened ecosystems by establishing marine reserves by adopting existing international laws to summarize this module we have understood that india is a diverse country in terms of its ecosystem it has varied ecosystem with a number of forest a number of grasslands and a varied aquatic ecosystem it is our duty to maintain this biodiversity by understanding the conservation strategies thank you